Hi there, this is a review of Bloodborne, a dark fantasy action game developed by From Software and released for the PlayStation 4 in 2015. In this game, you play someone who's travelled to the dark and brooding city of Yarnum in search of a special substance called Pale Blood. It's hinted that the inhabitants of Yarnum were specialists in manipulating blood, but unfortunately, when you wake up at the start of the game, you quickly work out that something's gone terribly wrong. The majority of Yarnum's inhabitants have been transformed into crazy killers and rabid beasts who will attack you on sight. This is a very combat oriented game with a high mortality rate. Bloodborne includes many different character stats that you can level up, but the two key mechanics revolve around your life and stamina bars, which are shown in the top left of the screen. Stamina, the green bar, goes down with each swing of a weapon that you take. Once you're out of stamina, you basically can't attack anymore and have to wait for your stamina pool to rebuild. As you take damage, your life bar drops. That's the red bar. However, you have a short window of time in which to counter-attack, and if you manage to hit your opponent, some of your missing life is refunded. This makes combat fast-paced and intense, and you're rewarded for continuing to engage the enemy. When you kill things, they might drop items. Useful things in particular include blood vials, which are basically the health potions of this game. It seems that you pick up vials of blood, which you then use to inject yourself. It seems quite unhygienic, especially in a city where a bloodborne illness has turned everyone into crazy beasts. But oh well, it lets us live longer, and every drop of blood is needed. If your life bar ever goes down to zero, then unsurprisingly you die. And that happens quite a lot. When you die in Bloodborne, you respawn at certain unlockable points in the game. They look like lanterns, and have creepy skeletons reaching out of the ground from underneath them. Seems like a bit of a sign. Unfortunately, all of the critters that you worked so hard to kill since your last respawn also end up getting revived. And what's worse, your blood echoes will all have disappeared. Blood echoes are basically the currency in this game, and you need them for all sorts of things. To level up your character, to buy new equipment, or to improve and repair your current equipment. Yep. Your current equipment wears down, so there's a nasty spiral where the more often you die, the worse your weapons get, and the less likely it becomes it will survive further battles. And with your blood echoes gone, you can't even pay to get your equipment repaired. If you happen to make it back to where you died the previous time, you can pick up your blood echoes again. But if you get killed a second time before you get there, then they're gone for good, and all your work was in vain. At the respawn lanterns, you can also choose to enter a spirit realm called the Hunter's Dream. Here, among other things, you can level up your character's abilities, get new equipment, and improve your current equipment. Surprisingly, unlike many other modern games that try to introduce the mechanics in a somewhat straightforward and hopefully intuitive way, Bloodborne just hits you with its full complexity from the get-go. At the start of the game, you wake up in a clinic with no weapon, immediately face a giant wolf beast, and in all likelihood will get killed and reappear in the Hunter's Dream. The Hunter's Dream makes little sense at this point though, since you can't actually do anything there yet. So you wander around, trying to interact with various tombstones and other things that have no explicable function. Fortunately, you do get given some weapons though, so hopefully you can take them back to that werewolf creature in the clinic and get rid of it, and actually get on with the rest of the game. As I mentioned, the Hunter's Dream does become very important later on, because it's the only place where you can level up your character and improve other things. No place to awaken with the Awakening Headstone? What? Have you been feeling run down lately? Are your arms so heavy that they may as well have been mauled off by a wolf beast? Then why not try all new yarn and blood? Yarn and blood, also available in convenient ready to eject syringe multi the graphics of Bloodborne are an interesting mix. It was developed for the PS4, so the designers seem to make good use of the available modern graphics hardware, to some extent. As you've already seen, certain aspects of the world are beautiful. The dark brooding atmosphere of Yarnum comes across really well through the intricately designed gothic buildings and appropriate lighting effects. However, some other aspects of the graphics are far less impressive. For example, many of the creatures in Yarnum are just ugly. Ugly rats, that for some reason carry throwing knives. Ugly birds, that for some reason can't fly very well. Ugly giant pig. Ugly inhabitant who looks like a scarecrow. What kind of disease did this again? 
But in my opinion, the most problematic thing is that many of the creatures move in a strange cartoonish way. This seems really inconsistent with the amount of effort that's clearly gone into the rest of the design, and is quite jarring in what's supposed to be a dark and gloomy place. Here are some ugly wolf beasts, and they can do a crab walk. Run away! Overall, i found Bloodborne to be a mixed experience so far. When I first tried it, I played for a couple of hours and became immensely frustrated. At that point, I would have only rated it 1 out of 5 dice. A few weeks later, I decided to give it another shot, and after playing some more, I think I'm beginning to see a bit of method underlying the seeming madness. I can take down some of the critters now, at least some of the time, and I've finally made it past the first boss. He was so tough that beating him actually felt like a real achievement. But unfortunately, overall, I just don't find this game hugely compelling. The story is confusing, develops very slowly, and seems completely secondary to the insane combat and very high mortality rate. So overall, I'd rate it 2 dice out of 5. Ah, the Yarnum Hotel. I say, open up. Lads, you've come on. You'd open the door on a night of hunt. Away with you. Now. Well, I never. 